All right. Hey, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. Our goal at the Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program like yourself. In today's lesson, we're going to cover the items listed right here. If you are not familiar with those items, hey, no worries. Stick around. We're going to jump right in. Alright, hey, let's go ahead and get started. Before we do so, though, I just want to mention, if you like this video and in the end, go ahead and, and you know click that subscribe button below. That helps us a lot. Let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson. Alright, in the previous lesson, we learned what a generic is in Java. It's a parameterized type. We learned how Java changed their types, such as ArrayList, to be parameterized to support generics to basically have parameterized data structures. So you can have more strongly typed uh, data structures in Java. Get that compile time checking versus uh, running something in production and finding out that you tried to put the wrong data into the wrong data structure. So generics, we learned about what generics are. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about um, how to create your own generic. How do I create an object? Uh, that is a parameterized type that only allows certain types as parameters. Well, let's let's go ahead and I'll give you an example of of doing that. So so let's imagine that I'm a teacher and I have a grade book and I want my grade book. I want to have two grade books. I want to have I want to store grades for all of my students and I want to have two different types of grade books for whatever reason. Uh, one of the grade books I might want to store a homework grades. And in the other grade book, I might want to store test grades. So I want to have two different types of grade books. Now, my grade book's going to keep a list of grades, right? So I could do, you know, a list, and I could, you know, grades would be doubles because they're basically decimals, and I could store grades that way. But that doesn't distinguish between that. That, that just basically allows me to have a grade book. Um, that can store doubles. It doesn't let me store a homework grade versus a test grade, right? I could actually put a homework grade in here and a test grade in here. So how would I create a grade book that only lets me store a homework grade and then another grade book that only lets me store test grades? Well, I've got this object grade book and I went ahead and created uh, two other objects, three other objects actually. I've created this cl uh, class called grade so I have a class called grade. It stores a double, which is the, the grade, the grade value. Um, and I put this Lombok annotation on it. It's called data. So Lombok's utility, if you haven't learned about Lombok yet, it's a great utility. It allows me to, to automatically create setters and getters uh, to automatically add certain methods onto my class. So I use Lombok library for everything I do. It's just an easy way to program in Java. Very popular framework. If you haven't learned it yet, you should definitely go look it up. So this Lombok annotation is just going to add setters and getters so I can set grade and get grade. No big deal. So I have a grade class and I've got a I've got a homework grade which extends that. So I've got a homework grade, got my student name, my test name, and this should be homework name. Let's change that to homework name. And there's better ways I know of doing this, but it's just for this example. Uh, let's let's create these classes. So I've got a homework name, a student name, and extends grade. And now if I go over here to test grade, I've got a test grade class. It also extends grade and I've got a student name and a test name. Now I might have put I might want to put other properties on here that that the homework grade doesn't have and test grade does have. Maybe the grades are weighted as far as importance and, and averaging out your total grade, something like that. So maybe just some kind of uh, weighting factor you might want to add to each one of these or something. Who knows? But for this example, we have two types of grades. And for whatever reason, I want to store them in separate grade books. All right, so how do I create a grade book that can store only test grades and a grade book that can store only homework grades. So I'm going to go back to grade book. Now this is where generics come in. So I can make this grade book a data structure that basically just stores a certain type. I can make it a generic, I can make it a parameterized type. How do I do that? 
Well, you do that again with the less than and greater sign, basically creating this diamond. And I'm going to specify T. You can specify whatever letter you like, T, V, R, P, doesn't matter. It's just, uh, it's just a placeholder for whoever uses this object to specify a type, right? So you can, you can use whatever value you want here. It doesn't matter. But this is basically me defining a class called Gradebook, and I'm saying it's a it's with this less than or greater than sign, and T, I'm saying it's a parameterized type, which is a generic. So I've got a Gradebook, and Gradebook accepts for parameters the type of T. So I want to store a list of uh, T's. And I'm going to add a method on here to add grade to the grade book, add grades. And what is it going to take in? Well, it's going to take in T and grades dot add T. So there we go. Now, whoops, grades dot add grade. There we go. Okay. So I've got a gradebook class. It is a parameterized type. It takes it'll be it'll take in parameters that are the type of T, which will be whatever you specify when using this class. And we'll show you that in a minute. And we're going to store these T's, these types, in the grades array list by calling add grades method, which takes in the type of T. So this is basically a generic type data structure. I've created my own little parameterized type. And it's that simple. Now, let's say I have a parameterized type and I want it to take in two different types of parameters. Well, I could put a comma there and put V. And I could have um, I could have this uh, add grades return a different parameter called V. And it could return whatever V is. Um, or or I could have another method that accepts V as a parameter. Something like that, right? So if I wanted to, I can have more than one parameter. In this case, I just need one parameter type. I'm just going to do T. So let me get rid of this V method. I just wanted you to know that was possible. All right, so I have a grade book. It accepts the type of T. So how do I use this parameterized type? How do I take advantage of this? Well, you do it the same way as you would with like an array list. So I'm going to go over here to a, a class I've got called Create Generic, and I'm going to create a grade book. Before I create a grade book, first I'm going to create some grades. So let's do um, let's do a homework grade first. And let's bring that over so you can see better. What's it take next? It takes a homework name, test A. And I'm going to set the uh, grade to. 99.5. So I've created a homework grade. Now my homework grade, I call it test A. Let's call it homework A. Okay. Now I've got a homework grade. Let's create a test grade. And I'm going to set a grade on it. I didn't do so well in it. I got a 58. So I've got two types of grades here, a test grade and a homework grade. And I want to put them in two different types of grade books. Let's go ahead and create those two different types of grade books. So first I'm going to 
create a grade book that takes in test grades only. How would I do that? Well, I got grade book. I got to do my less than, and then and then tell it what type is allowed for that grade book. So we're going to make this my test grade book. And I'm going to also create a grade book that takes in homework grades. All right, so there are both my two different types of grade books. So test grade book dot add grades. And what would happen if I try to pass in homework? to the test grade book. What do you think will happen? Let's pass in Shane's homework grade. Well, there you go. I've got a compile time error. It says, hey, this object only takes in test grades, not homework grades. So that is the beauty of having a parameterized type. You get that upfront checking. It won't allow me to pass in a homework grade. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in um, Shane's test grade and Let's go ahead and put my homework grade in my homework grade book. Now, if I were to try to pass in a uh, test grade here, I'll get that same check, right? It's not going to allow me, right? You get a compile time check. That way you've kept these um, data structures separate, stored in two different places like you wanted to from the very beginning, the reason you created the generics in the first place. It does an upfront check. So there we go. I have uh, two types of grade books utilizing the same class. I just do the name of the class. I say what parameter I want this parameterized type to use. In this case, it's test grade. And you, as you can see here with the test grade, it only allows me to pass in with the test grade book. It only allows me to pass in test grades. Now here I have the grade book with the homework grade as the, as the type with this parameterized type, and it will only allow me to pass in homework grades. So that's it. It's that simple. That's how you create a parameterized type. Very simple. Let's go back to my grade book just to show you that one more time. I've got the name of my class, grade book, and I've got the greater than less sign, greater than and less than sign, and I've got T. Now I could use V, doesn't matter. You can use either one, T, V, none of that matters, right? So this is a parameterized type. All right, so hey, that's it for today. I hope that makes a lot of sense. If you have any questions, leave us a message below. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click subscribe below and click that bell icon. That helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. Let others know. If you enjoyed this video, let others know about our YouTube channel. Send them our way. We really appreciate it. If you like the video, also click like and dislike. Click dislike too. Leave us a message. Let us know how we can improve. Leave us a message. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll definitely get back to you. So that's it for today. I just want to say thank you, and I hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next time. Bye.